everybody, welcome to Local Motors. I'm Matt. Today we're going to be talking about the physics of drift drags. So, to explain this, we're going to start out by drawing a drift drag. Just kind of an outline. You've got your rear axle, your wheels, and then uh, your main frame, and call that your seat. And your wheel will go up here. So, very simple model. You're looking down on this. First, we'll look at um, the situation where the trike hasn't started sliding yet. So you still have full um, traction on your rear wheels. Obviously the objective of the rear wheels on this thing is to slide, so the coefficient of static friction is pretty low to begin with, but the coefficient of dynamic friction is much higher. So once you start sliding, it's really easy to continue sliding. But before you start sliding, let's say you're in a turn, and all these examples will just assume you're in a left turn. So you're gonna have your front wheel um, it's going to be turned a little bit to the left. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. And all the wheels are going to be happy right now. They're not sliding at all. Everything is just kind of going around in a turn. So your center of rotation is going to be right about the middle. That could be up for debate. We can discuss that at length uh, at another time. Your center of gravity is going to be slightly behind that. Um, so this will be your center of rotation and your CG will be somewhere forward of your butt back here. Um, so as you're going around a turn without sliding, you're gonna have a centripetal force um, that's actually gonna be the force that's resisting the centrifugal force uh, as you're going around a turn. There's gonna be some component of your inertia that's always gonna be moving outwards from the center of gravity. So at some point, you will uh, break free of the friction, the uh, static friction that you have of these wheels and you'll start to slide. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because one, th one thing that I see a lot of people do over the hundreds of people that I've taught to ride drift trikes is they'll try to throw their weight into it when they first get on the trike. And you really don't need to do that. It'll start to slide at about five miles an hour. Um, but you know, it kind of can be a more advanced technique. You can throw your weight a little bit uh, due to the difference between your center of gravity and the center of rotation to make the trike start to break free at a lower speed. Um, but really you don't have to do it when you're first starting out. It's not that, not that big a deal. Uh, so that makes you start to slide. So next we'll look at what happens when you're actually sliding you're in a drift. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna continue to assume that the trike is turning to the left. So you are now sliding to the left. Actually, you're actually sliding out to the right in our left turn. I know that's kind of a uh, interesting idea. I'll use a different color here. So your motion is actually gonna be in this direction. If you're making a left turn, you're gonna be sliding to the right. So in an ideal case, if you want your front wheel not to slide, your front wheel is going to be aligned with the direction of motion. So your front wheel's not sliding at all. Your rear wheels are now sliding quite a lot. Um, you've broken free of your static friction and now you're uh, completely sliding. So what happens in this situation is you have the friction of these wheels sliding that's actually creating a force backwards from the direction of motion, but it's offset by this amount from your center of rotation, so whatever that is. So if you were to multiply that distance by the amount of force you have due to the friction of the rear wheels while they're sliding, that would be the force or the torque that is creating the tendency for the trike to straighten out. So if you have your wheel going straight, and this is assuming any type of trike, you don't need to be looking at power just yet, we'll just assume the, wheel is, uh, the front wheel is freewheeling and you're in a drift. Um, and your wheel is aligned with your direction of motion, eventually, because of this force here and because there's effectively no force on the front wheel, the trike will straighten out. That's just the natural occurrence. That's just what's gonna happen. So if you start to turn your wheel, you can counteract that. Again, assuming no um, uh, power from the front wheel. If your wheel is turned a little bit to the left, uh, and your direction is still this way, you're now actually, because of the traction that the front wheel has, creating some force component that's going in this direction. 
So with the wheel turned a little bit to the left in the same situation where you're sliding, you can turn the wheel to a point where this force and the torque related to that force will counteract the torque of the that's created by the rear wheels trying to make you slide this way and you can maintain a drift. Now if you don't have power, what's going to happen is you're eventually going to just drift to a stop. But if you're going down a hill, that's how you're going to you know, continue to drift through a turn. So what happens is a lot of people, they get on a trike the first time, they don't counter steer enough. So what will happen is you'll be turning and you won't turn enough back towards the direction that you're moving and you'll wind up spinning out because you'll be creating such a force here that it completely overcomes the um, force from the rear wheels going this way and it'll make you completely spin out. So what you actually want to do is to avoid spinning out and to avoid uh, counter steering so much that you don't um, that you don't just stop drifting. Just redraw our frame here. There's a range for any particular drift where you're going to be happy. So let's assume that there's a point like this. So anywhere in this arc, you're going to be okay. If you go too far to the right you're actually going to increase the rate at which the trike centers itself and starts going in a straight line. If you go too far to the left, the uh, force you have going in the direction of the turn is going to cause you to spin out. So there's some happy area in here where you keep the front, front wheel that will just continue the drift gracefully. Most people, the first couple times they start out, actually don't counter steer enough. They would have the wheel too far to the left and they spin out several times. Um, so that is the most basic um, physics behind how this works. Now when you get a motor involved, you're actually increasing the force uh, here. So not only do you have your force going this direction from the uh, steering force of the wheel, but then you have the force of the motor going this direction, and this creates an additional torque that is this force times the distance um, to the center of rotation. And then those two both work together to counteract the force of the uh, rear wheels trying to straighten you out. So really it's just, it just changes where the sweet spot is between the throttle and the steering. And you know, it's really something that I think that maybe trying to visualize something like this might help a lot of people out the uh, first time they go out and try to ride one of these things. We just started production of the very first batch of Verados. They should be going out uh, in the next couple weeks. Very excited to let you guys get your hands on these things. If you have any questions about this kind of stuff uh, or you find something I did wrong, please uh, comment on this video or join the uh, discussion thread on the Verado project on localmotors.com. Keep watching and uh, see you guys around.